In Mega Man ZX, Model PX regularly receives ton of flack for being one of the worst forms in the game. And to be fair, on first glance without experimenting further with its limited moveset, it is easy to come to that conclusion. It doesn't help that a couple of other forms kit dwarfs it and spoils the player with their more straightforward to understand tools, along with a myriad of other factors to consider. And Model X's basic playstyle of double charge and shoot effectively allows the player to turn off their brain and just focus on dodging and aiming. And hey, that's fine. I'm a huge advocate of playing however you like. So if you want to lean on the metagame or just don't care about technicality and want to have fun, enjoy the game however you please. That being said, one thing I won't allow to fly is taking advantage of that right and try and claim something is objectively true based on personal experience alone. Model PX is unfortunately a frequent target of what I'd like to call metagame bullying, and that the collective lack of understanding of its kit casts a downpour of inaccuracies towards its capabilities. Okay, so what do I mean by this? Basically, many players, casual and veteran alike, collectively come to an agreement that because of PX's smaller moveset and seemingly weak damage output from its attacks, that means the model's trash. Maybe that argument would have a leg to stand on if literally every non-Saber model's base damage was pretty garbage without the Overdrive active, which, you know, that isn't the case. But let's not jump too deep into that territory just yet. I'll preface by stating a fact. PX is not a bad form. In fact, by the end of this video, after I break down its capabilities, tools, utility, and all else, you'll understand why I rank it as an easy contender within the top three best forms in the game. So put those pitchforks down for now. Let's dive into PX's moveset first. PX throws a total of four kunai knives per prolonged press of the attack buttons. Each deals a single point of boss damage into an extremely quick combo, which is quite weak despite this. However, one type of overdrive will boost that to two damage per hit. If it were any stronger than that, it'd be kinda broken considering the combo system. Grounded and dashing kunais are clearly better ensuring you land all four, but later I'll get into the usefulness of the aerial throws. More or less PX's most versatile tool. Given that it's only a level 1 charged attack, it allows you to net constant DPS and rack up tons of damage within a short time frame with the multi hits. Honestly, even if you don't loop it like a shield boomerang in a Zero series, you can easily get away with just turning off your brain and spamming this thing with overdrive, given it takes little to no time to charge it. Having the best move in its arsenal being a level 1 charge is more powerful than you think. Here's an interesting one. PX's shield has quite a few uses. It negates projectiles, but disappears upon contact with either a decently powerful attack or contact with the enemy itself. However, it also deals damage. About three to bosses, six with overdrive active, which can really come in handy if you're speeding through a section and there's a pesky enemy in the way that you want to kill while keeping momentum. I'll discuss more of its capabilities later. Returning from the Zero series, Shadow Dashing is as simple as just dashing while Overdrive is active. Doing so will allow PX to phase through virtually any enemy and its attacks, with exceptions here and there as it doesn't save you from instant death hazards and a scarce few attacks from bosses, most notably from Omega. Also, certain enemies function as solid objects so you can't pass through them either. Still, it was a broken foot chip in the Zero series that was very stealth-like, so having that on Phantom's form was a given. Obviously not exclusive to the form, but for the sake of this video, it's essential to capitalize on how the double damage makes a huge difference. We'll jump into more practical uses for Overdrive as we delve deeper, where relevant. So yeah, on the surface, that doesn't look like the form provides enough to be of any use other than fulfilling a niche. However, PX's moveset offers flexibility with these four moves and are best used in tandem with one another, not just for standalone use. I'll get into its practical uses and stage traversal after I cover boss strategies, as its prowess within boss battles seem to be the main punch of criticism this form receives. Let's jump into the typical combo that you'd normally use if you're trying to maximize your damage. The form, just like all the other forms in the game, follows the same rules of the hit priority system. Shield, Four Kunai and Shuriken is its strongest combo without the Shuriken loop included. Enough to shave off a huge chunk of one bar of HP within mere seconds. Now, not every boss will allow you to perform this seamlessly, as the likes of Pandora, Lureri, and Leg Anchor aren't grounded bosses. Lureri you can do it if you've got enough good timing with Shadow Dashing, but this is primarily a grounded combo. You'd think because of this PX has no other options to select from to combat non-grounded bosses. And, well, that's not the case. This is where Shadow Dash can be your lifeline. The mere fact that PX can phase through anything allows for it to create openings normally not feasible for other forms. Just having the ability to dash with Overdrive Charge Kunai during the Shadow Dash allows for safe, extremely quick, and sneaky damage against bosses. 
and opens the venues for multiple opportunities to keep up your aggression while staying almost 100% safe. I say almost because again a few moves and like half of Omega's moveset can clap you right out of those iframes. And it's not a situational thing either, literally every move can be used in conjunction with it in some way or another. Let's take the shield for an example, if you're afraid of taking collision damage while trying to go for maximum damage in a boss battle, you can just shadow dash with the shield active. Throwing kunai during the shadow dash against regular enemies are also just universally great. Shuriken paired with shadow dash isn't as impressive as with kunai and shield, but clever use of shuriken loop can allow you to use the full PX combo in the air, as shown in the battle against high Volt here. However, if you throw the shuriken ahead of time, you can also just allow it to follow you after you shadow dash through an enemy. That's also kind of useful too. Speaking of aerials, I guess this is a good enough time to explain practical uses for the aerial kunai. Naturally, if you release all four during a single press, you'll get this spread throw that won't be very effective on bosses, nor on some of the weakest enemies in the game for that matter. Overdrive helps take care of the weak enemies, but still, in most cases you'll only land one of them from a safe distance on a boss, which is a measly 2 damage with Overdrive active. However, if you use them point blank, you'll actually net most of the hits, making that same combo I did on High Volt much more effective on the damage side of things. To get more into how to negate the issues during the stages, you can cancel the spread throw by just mashing the attack button. This keeps the kunai firing in a V-shaped angle, think the V-shot from Mega Man Zero 3 and lends itself to being a much better enemy shredder than even Buster Shot Lemons can compare to in Model X. In most cases, you don't even need overdrive to kunai enemies to death, conserving energy in the process. This technique works exactly the same as it does in the Zero series, but allow me to replay a clip from part 2 of my Zero series tech guide, which details how damage stacking works. Damage stacking is when two attacks overlap with each other, and the resulting effect is that they reset each other and deal damage on every frame upon collision. The simplified version, toss a boomerang, saber when boomerang touches the enemy. Simple as that. In Zero One, you can do this with the triple rod and boomerang too, but it's way more effective with a skull crush from the Z saber and charged attack. However, this doesn't work on bosses. It's more of a mini boss shredder. But even with all of that in mind, there's no shield boomerang in the game that make that possible, since Model HX is the only one with a built-in damage stacker in the form of its triple slash and the sonic boom firing from it. I wonder how... Oh yeah. Now this still presents a problem. PX doesn't have a saber. That only leaves kunai, and even then you've got a very narrow window to throw just a few kunai to allow the overlapping per frame damage. So, what's left? Well, there's always the loop. Because you can grant yourself ample time to prepare yourself for the shuriken's loop toward the enemy, this allows you to position yourself just right to toss a metric crap ton of kunai to add to the shuriken, and rack up this multi-frame damage. Of course, you'll only find great mileage out of this from mini bosses, but hey, that's pretty much what the damage stacking was primarily used for in the Zero series, so that's not a fault for PX. So all of this is fine and dandy, but like every other Guardian model, PX needs to manage its weapon energy wisely. What I'm about to briefly explain are methods to conserve this energy wisely so you can enter boss rooms with ample to spare. Luckily for you, PX is a model that lends itself to low weapon energy consumption in general, since Shuriken is level 1 charge, and Shield won't be nearly used as much in comparison on a regular basis. Rely more on Kunai and Shadow Dash in stages. It goes without saying that since Phantom himself was a ninja, it's stand to realize PX PX benefits more from passing unnecessary enemies in the way. Going all murder happy like with the saber models is fine and all, but only because their kit allows for it without much loss in resources. Since speed and stealth is its game, dashing with kunai spam and accurate aerial throws will get the job done against the enemies you do need to kill. And of course shadow dash is like right there, the briefly passed by pest that you do not need to waste energy on. Get into the habit of alternating overdrive on and off, quickly activating overdrive during an attack then immediately switching it off will do your energy reserves a huge favor. This is less of a PX thing and more so just a general guideline to energy conception across the board for other forms. If you need to use a shuriken, be sure to damage stack with it during a mini boss fight or rely on a single loop of the shuriken if possible. These intermission battles within certain areas are generally pretty demanding of your energy, so your weapon bar will thank you later for relying on the shuriken loop. And hey, you'll get a quick kill out of it with less energy spent. Don't get discouraged if you can't loop with just one shuriken, just manage as few throws as you can. 
Don't abuse Shadow Dash. I know it's very tempting to just skip almost everything in the area to make things easier, but then that's just gonna leave you with barely anything to use against the bosses if you're trying to play PX primarily, or if you're unlucky with energy refills during the stage. Though if you do wanna get, just use PX for stages and use whatever model for whatever boss, then uh, I mean, that, that's not a bad idea either, but this video is all about PX, not the others. PX benefits from being non-elemental, meaning its lack of an element will keep damage consistent against everything you encounter, enemy and boss alike. This balances it out, since any sort of additional elemental damage paired with Shadow Dash's absurd utility would just make it broken. The straightforward nature of the kunai and shuriken also aid PX well to less stressful level 4 victory requirements, so you don't have a ridiculously wide hitbox of a saber or anything like that to worry about hitting a weak point when you really don't want it to. All of PX's moves cut a clean path forth, and it's all on you to just aim well. Thankfully, a large majority of grounded bosses can be easily smacked with the kunai and shuriken without needing to aim terribly well. Here's the main reason why I've made this video, and in my opinion, the most important information you need to take in and consider. Speed play and optimal strategies, as they call it, are not the definitive way to play this game nor any game for that matter. I believe over time we've gotten too enamored by the concept of speedrunning that for some reason it seems to be interpreted as the de facto best playstyle in the game, when in fact it's not. Such a thing doesn't exist when the game wasn't designed around just one playstyle like that. PX gets a lot of flack for not being able to effortlessly steamroll the game, when it's actually the form of one of the highest skill ceilings. Here are two common toxic mentalities that I'll quote. It's bad if I have to get good with it or it's bad because I can't kill a boss in 3 seconds with it. Not sure when these hot takes form or why speedrun strats somehow determine it's the optimal and most accepted way to play, but speed play and technical play aren't mutually exclusive. They're two different play styles as one does whatever is necessary to save time, even to the point of relying on exploits not intended by the developers, while the other sacrifices time to satiate their need to explore all their options for stylish play. PX is more or less the representative of that second play style. It can't break the game in two, but it's not supposed to. However, saying it's weak is objectively false. Its strengths does not lie in its high bursts of damage. That's literally for HX and why if I were to make a tier list, that form would be in its own tier. When you separate HX from the other models, it opens up your eyes to how balanced the forms really are, and their strengths and weaknesses don't overshadow each other too much. Like I said earlier in the video, I'm an advocate for play however you want. PX gives players who are interested in its more technical approach an opportunity to experience the game differently, and is rewarded with a model who can literally just create openings for itself to rip into the bosses with each exchange once they master it. This is why I really dislike the terms metagame and optimal, because they force a rift between the playstyles and misleads players into thinking to themselves, if I'm not using the stronger option or if I'm not going as fast as possible, I think I'm playing the game wrong. And trust me, you're not playing the game wrong for not speedrunning, and vice versa. That said, Model PX it doesn't deserve a lot of the criticism thrown at it. I can totally understand if the model's moveset isn't everyone's style, because it requires you to step out of your comfort zone. And to be fair, it did need a sword at least, just saying. However, just because one doesn't like a certain model doesn't mean it's right to claim it's bad based on personal preference. I mean, I hate model FX, but I'm not gonna sit here and say that's a terrible model too, because it's actually kinda good. That sort of mentality does a disservice toward players who genuinely want to learn PX and use it to its maximum potential. So, if you like PX or are just interested in learning it, go ahead and use it. It's not a bad form. It's not the best for speed running, but definitely upper tier and has advantages no other model possesses for all types of playstyles. As amazing and respected as speedrunning is, we really need to stop using a singular playstyle as the judge for what's good and what's not, when that's not very inclusive to other styles. PX is an unfortunate victim of that bias. I urge you to check out Meta X's Model PX Boss Rush video, which is why I've been saying for ages that I won't make an all bosses video for it. 
He's already shown how to use it masterfully within a single video, and any boss compilation I'd make that would be its own video would be redundant or just have slightly different approaches. So I'll reserve the ending of this video with just a montage of the boss battles in full that I've recorded for this video, just to satisfy the requests. I urge you to check out Meta X's bottle bottle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Meta X, apparently you have a bottle now. I demand to see it. I urge you to check out Meta X's bottle. Why do I keep saying bottle? <laughs> I urge you to check out Meta X's. <laughs> I urge you to check out Metal X's model, model, bottle. Uh, okay, that's why I've been saying bottle. <laughs> okay, there we go.